Hi guys. What you're looking at is the carnage that's left over after uh, building in the fence down there. I'm using some of the scraps right now to make a, a column to mount the operator on. There's the rock. The rock failed me again this morning. Every time it gets too close to its buddy over there, it decides to imitate him. I'm trying to put together a little video about all the problems we had with it this morning. Maybe help somebody out. As you can see, in the distance, well, I don't know how good a camera this is. We'll walk down there. This has been the project that's been holding up all my machinery building. My wife wanted a gate and a fence, and it's my job to provide one. Trying to put together a coherent video about how we made everything and what we've done so far. Frankly, I've got so much film to edit that it becomes a daunting task. Daunting task. This is what I've been working on. About 85 feet of fence, rails, gate. All the rails are tacked in place. All the posts are ready to be treated. I go ahead and paint the thing all the way down in there and then uh, tar it or rubberize it and then concrete around it. Make it last longer got a uh, hundred and seventeen feet of continuous weld to go all the way around all that so I'm going to be doing that for a while but it makes a nice nice fence I'm trying to get done right now is get it automated so that it will uh, Not be a pain having to get out and open it every time. Here's my super heavy duty adjustable hinges. But it's a 16 foot long gate. They need to be pretty heavy. I make these hinges like this so they can be adjusted slide it in and out, up and down, and even shim it out if you need to, but uh, they work well. It's about the only kind of hinges I've put on for the last 10 years. Well, let me get back to what I was doing. I'm sorting through the scrap looking for some pieces that match what I need to do. So many of these had a very slight angle cut into it, about six degrees. That's square. That's got a little angle. I 
I am truly impressed with this saw. This is the first blade I've ever put on it. And it cuts like a trooper. Make a trip to the scrap yard. That's a good one. Found a regular old pencil works best on this stuff. Paint markers and chalk sticks just kind of soapstone just kind of leave smear marks. Oh dear. I don't like about this saw is it spits chips everywhere. Before it comes into the shop, we're going to have to investigate ways of controlling those chips. Out here it's fine. Inside it'd be a big mess. Alright, let's go lay this out. Time to make the last little fabrication bit on this fence I'm building. Around here, I have truly become a fan of the LiftMaster LA500 arm operators for gates. They, uh, in the old days, the only good operators we had were the ones that mounted to the ground with big arm on them. But I tell you, in the last five, six years, LiftMaster's LA500 arms really stepped up to the plate. I have less trouble with those than any one. And the added benefit is it's mounted to the gate post instead of the ground. Now around here, I'm fighting shifting soils all the time. And... It just seems that unless you drill a pier underneath those operators, they move and the geometry gets a little off on the, uh, the arm and, and they just have problems. Anyway, I use the LA500s. First off, they're cheaper even. And they, they, they seem to work very well. I probably put 200 of them on and uh, the only time I've ever had a problem was one customer kept telling me his gate would close and then open right back up. Well they put sensors 
on all these systems now. So if it feels too much strain, it, it'll back up and thinks it's hit a car or something. I replaced the brand new arm and still did it. I replaced the motherboard, it still did it. And so I'm sitting there going, well, something's weird. Turned out, I looked over on the other side of the gate and they had mounted a Christmas wreath. Now, it didn't weigh very much, but what was happening is they had used some um, twine to tie it to the metal gate. And so as the gate was closing and would come to a stop, that wreath would kind of lift off the gate and then come back and tap it. Wasn't very much, but it was enough for that sensor to think uh, we've hit something and it backed up. It's always something, you know? It's always something. Well, anyway, the 500 has a, a weatherproof box that you can mount on the wall or anything. A lot of times we put them on the gate. I just don't like the way it looks from the outside of the fence. The rails are kind of symmetrical on both sides, and then you got a big box or the back of a box. So a lot of times I'll build these little posts here, set them about a foot away from the fence, mount the box onto it, and in this case, we're going to have a little electric sub-panel come up. We're going to put some lights on the, the posts. So, I think I'm going to zap this thing together tonight. Spray some paint on it, on the back side, so it'll look nice. Three-eighths. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to try the Millermatic with some, um, I believe it's got 0.35 wire on it, using C25 gas. I'm going to see how it does on just plain old steel that you don't even prep. Probably got a little oil on it and everything else. I know some of you guys are out there are shuddering, but... This is probably the way it gets done 90% of the time in the industry. Well, country uh, gate builders. Thick gloves, hard to get this tape measure out. One of those kind of days, rock dies. One more. Big pliers are out on the trailer. Get a box. And one thing these units aren't good at is physical damage. In fact, this one is particularly snake bit. It, uh, off one gate over on a ranch not too far from here luckily
This is the third control box that I've had to put on that wrench in two years. First one replaced one that was another brand that they had bad, is always failing on them. Lightning hit it 30 days after it just fried the whole, the whole gate structure. So uh, we put a new one on it. And about two months ago, a cow came up and ate all the wires and shorted it out. I honestly wish a cow had eaten my truck. Then they may know what to do about it. It's a bummer. You buy a nice truck and it's the third time. Oh well. That's going to be the stand. And we got some little metal caps that go on the end and make it look nice. I got to go get my glasses. I can't see the puddle worth a darn. And even though I love this helmet, I don't have cheaters for it. So I'll be back. Amazing what a pair of glasses will do for your welding. I can see again. That's pretty nice. I've been looking into one of the uh, air fans that fit inside your helmet to uh, help with the humidity. You get hot and sweaty and Helmet fogs up. like this thing it's not going into darkening mode very quickly it's just coming and going
have time to fool with this. And it's time to fool with this Miller and see what the heck's going on. Auto on and off. Shade 11 delay sensitivity. Things will fit a gorilla. It's got a ratcheting. Click to the the upper uh, headrest when you clicks different positions I guess it gives a very green tint to what I'm welding it's clear it looks nice the other ones are kind of a bluish tint doesn't stop you from sweating. That's a big gap to fill up on a couple of these. Let's see how that works. That's how I go have to fill them things. This thing keeps wanting to slip off my head. I'm gonna have to welder, wear a welder's cap with it. A little more pinpoint precision there. Do not like that head gear on that Miller helmet. Slides off the back of your head. It could go back underneath your head.
had a lot of tidying. Those aren't my prettiest welds. Frankly, I'm so dang hot, I don't care right now. It's a problem. Go on and... Sometimes you just don't care. That's the one I just went over. It wasn't tying in on one side. I got it hot enough to tie. All those tied in pretty well. Mainly I just want something to sit out there in the ground and not have any pinholes and leak. It'd make me have to go out there and de-rust it. These little caps just slip over. And I find that if you paint the inside of them, and paint all of this before you put them on, you don't have rusty streaks coming down from the inside. Well, not especially pleased with those welds, but they're strong. I guess they'll do what they need to do. Unlike my friend Doug, I hate grinders. So, I guess I'm going to wire brush this off, let it cool down, put some primer on it, and get ready to plant tomorrow. That's all for today. Thank you.